Hello everyone and welcome back to day 9 of the Advent of Cyber 3 Retro Acme. Today's challenge is all about Wireshark and Paquette analysis, which is something I really like doing because it, it makes you look at stuff that you don't think you can look at. Um, you'll see whenever we get to the practical part of the room. But first, let's start with the theory aspect. As always, I won't dive too deep into this theory aspect just because, well, you can go ahead and read it. Uh, for yourself. However, I will focus on a little bit of uh, details. The first one being that we need to run uh, Wireshark as sudo. Uh, I never tried running it without sudo, so I'm not sure what it's going to do, uh, but just run it as sudo and it, you're going to be fine. So, what is Wireshark? Well, Wireshark is a network packet sniffer that allows you to capture packets and data in real time. So what does this all mean? Well, Wireshark is basically a man in the middle on your network and it hacks as some sort of proxy. I'm not sure if I can use that word proxy. I'll show it on screen right now if I can. Um, but basically what this does is your traffic will go through Wireshark and you will see the, um, the content of the packets uh, being sent. What does this all mean? Well, it means that, for example, if you don't use an encrypted protocol such as HTTPS, which is HTTP secure, so HTTP over uh, TLS, well, you can see all of the content that's being sent, which we'll see like on this um, example today. So what does this mean? It means that if you are, let's say, on a hostile network, and that there's somebody on the network running Wireshark between you and the router or where, wherever, and you are using HTTP websites, well, they could see your passwords, they could see your bank info, they could see anything that you send, basically, which is, of course, very bad. So let's go ahead and just go straight into the practical part um, and just learn as we go, right? So first off, you'll need to... Um, download the task files and then go into your downloads folder and then you can do sudo wireshark and then aoc3.pcap you don't need to be connected to the VPN today just because we downloaded the file so everything is local to the machine all right so we see a, a lot of logs basically so how can we make sense of it all well you'll see it's not that bad so let's scroll down to the first question all right, so the first question is that we need to find about get requests and which directory is found on the web server so how do we find get requests well the first way that you can do that is uh, looking at this uh, http dot request dot method equals equals get which is what is being taught to us in the course so let's do http and rlg did it so http dot request dot method space equal equal get what does this mean well you are looking for HTT for the http protocol that has the request method of get does that make sense hopefully it does and for example if you wanted to do post then you would just switch the equal equal to post basically which we'll do actually later on but let's stay on get for now. And we see that we are trying to get login a lot. We also try to get admin, www, cpanel, etc. So what do we need? Well, there's only one of them that is valid, I believe. So if we remove this filter and just do HTTP to see the HTTP uh, protocol, then we see that if we try to get slash login slash, the server sends us an OK. How do we know which one is a server and which one is a client? Well, the client will always query the server, so the client will send a GET request and the server will reply to that client. And if you look at the source, the client is 10.10.10.5 and the destination is 10.10.10.4. 10, 
then the source of the answer of the response is 10, 10, 10, 4, sending it to 10, 10, 10, 5, which is the client. So 10, 10, 10, 4 is the server, 10, 10, 10, 5 is the client. And we see that it's a 200 OK. Uh, so answer for um, the answer of which directory is found on the web server, it's login. Great. So what is the username and password used in the login page in the post section? So it's the same thing that I was mentioning uh, previously. So now we can look for post um, requests. So let's do uh, HTTP dot request dot method equals equals post and press enter. <coughs> so now we are filtering only for post requests. So what does this all mean? Well, now we can start looking at, for example, this first post request. Actually, I think all of them has it. All right, so <clears throat> you see that on this first post request of so the length 620, if you go to the HTML form URL encoded, um, you'll see that the forms that were sent are username MexQD and password Christmas 2021 exclamation mark. So if we were to grab this, for example, well, let's skip MexQD and then do Christmas 2021 exclamation mark. So see, that's the problem with having HTTP and not HTTPS, right? We can see this kind of things. So. If you don't know how we got there, we did HTTP.request.method equals equals post. We grabbed the first one that was uh, the length of 620, which I think both of them, yeah, both of them would work. Actually, all, all of them would work. So you can just grab the password and the um, username from any of the post requests that were sent. So <clears throat> yeah, just like that, we did question two. So what is the user agent name that has been sent here? So the user agent, how do we see that? Well, we can go look at the request itself. So, uh, sorry, at the, uh, we, well, yeah, the HTTP uh, protocol post request itself. And you'll see that inside the user agent, we have a flag. So how do we, do, how do we get there? Well, we just grabbed one of the same requests and went to the HTTP protocol. And then we saw inside the user agent of the request, the flag itself. Now what, what we can do is we can copy and let's copy all visible selected three items and just delete anything we don't need. Oops. Oh, okay. Uh, we need all of it, except of the except the user agent part. So sorry about that. So let's uh, copy all visible selected items, and let's just delete the user agent and the skip line at the end. There you go. All right, so in the DNS section, there is a text DNS query. What is the flag in the message of that DNS query? I'm not sure that the theory part shows us how to look specifically for text queries, but what we can do uh, I'm sorry if, if they do show us, but still, I'll uh, I'll just show you. Uh, what what we can do now is do DNS dot oops DNS dot text. Now doing that, it will show us the uh, DNS text queries that were sent. That's the response. And so, what do we need now? All right, so we see here inside of the answers of the uh, DNS response, we see that there's a text record of AOC3 is awesome and with a flag. So what do we need? We only need a flag this time around. So let's just do the same thing, but this time just delete everything. There you go. How did we get there? Well, we type DNS.text, we got into it, and if we look at actually the data that was sent, we see the flag, so we can just click there, or we can also manually just go into the DNS response and look for the uh, answer. 
answers. And we can also see it at the bottom of the raw uh, packet. And we can just click there and it's going to lead us there. All right. In the FTP section, what is the FTP login password? Well, if you read the theory, you know that we can filter for FTP just by typing FTP. And we actually see the things like straight away, right? They're right there sending requests every time because if you don't know FTP, you need to provide first a password, uh, sorry, first a username, then the password. So now we see request pass try hack me. Can I just copy that? I'm very bad at copying. Let's just type it. So let's just do try hack. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Try hack me. And the FTP section, what is the FTP command to upload the secret.txt file? So now if we go look here, we see that we, s we sent a request to store secret.txt. So the answer of this question will be store. And what is the content of the secret.txt file? Well, we can't see the content right now because this is just like the FTP request. We need to look for FTP data if we want to see the content of it. And actually, if you want to see the content of it, we can just look at the line-based text data and we can see the AOC flag, right? So FTP and as like two ports that's working, there's one port for the commands and there's one port for the data. Uh, port 21 is for the commands and port 20, I believe, is for the data transfer, if I remember correctly. So that's why it's two different um, protocol, basically, because it's not the same uh, port. So now we can see the content being one, two, three, cute face, three, two, one. So let's just copy this. And let's remove AOC flag and submit. Oops, remove the uh, line skip at the end. And just like that, guys, we completed day nine of the advent of Cyber 3. Uh, today's challenge was a bit easier, in my opinion, than the last two days, I believe. Um, even though I'm not really good with Wireshark, it all makes sense. And if you were totally new to Wireshark, well, hopefully you learned something interesting that you can use later on in your career or your life. Thank you guys so much for watching the 9 of the Advent of Cyber 3 by Triacme. As I said previously, today's challenge was a bit easier than the last two days, I believe, and it was a less long, <laughs> it was further, and that's always a welcome gift, I guess. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe, it helps me a lot. If I bring you value, uh, consider supporting me with the links in the description below. Uh, see you tomorrow for day 10, already day 10, of the Advent of Cyber 3 by Triacme. Uh, thank you guys and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.